All right, I suppose we can get started. Um, as a speaker, they give us an attendance list, so we'll probably just do like the attendance first if you guys want to raise your hands if you're here. No, I'm just kidding. That's, yeah, yeah, we're not going to do that. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, so I'm Luke Holmquist. I work for Red Hat. Um, and today we're going to be talking about this fun topic of cloud native development, which I'm sure you may have gone to a talk that, today or maybe possibly tomorrow that is very similar because um, I saw on the, on the uh, schedule there was very, a lot of very similar things, but we'll see if this is any different. Right. So like I said, I'm an engineer at Red Hat. Um, my, there's my Twitter handle if you want to follow me. I'm also a huge fish fan, so if anybody is also a huge fish fan, anybody in the room, raise your hands, nobody? Awesome. So if you want to come talk to me later, that would be great. Um, also, this, so this picture here is from 2009, and I realized that there's that whole 10-year challenge stupid thing. So that's from that's 10 years ago, and this is what I look like now in 2019. So there you go. There's the challenge completed. All right. So yeah. So all right. So what are we going to learn today? It's probably some uh, some ways to develop and deploy cloud native applications um, to Kubernetes or slash OpenShift. It's going to be probably the platform that we're going to use. Um, so what you're going to need for this workshop, and it is only an hour long, so uh, we'll try to go quick with these first few slides that I have that kind of introduce some topic or some concepts, and then the second half of it will just be like in the actual app and doing some things. Um, so right, so you really just need your laptop and uh, a web browser. Um, so hopefully everybody has a web browser installed on their laptop. Uh, hopefully, uh, that actually has JavaScript enabled. So that was the other that was the other thing, right? So right, so first survey. So who is? Uh, oh, sorry, did you not have a web browser installed? Is that what you were like? No. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, anybody here writing Node.js applications? Um, I mean, this is a Node conference, so I would imagine I'd see a bunch of hands. All right, cool. Um, anybody using containers to deploy um, their stuff? All right, cool. Handful, a good, good chunk of people. Um, anybody familiar with the Kube CTL, Kube Cuddle, whatever you want to power you over, want to pronounce it, or maybe the OpenShift command line CLI tools? Anything? No, that's probably why you're in the workshop to learn a little bit more about that. Um, anybody name a handful of Kubernetes objects? No? Yeah, there you go. Awesome. Um, any, anybody can name maybe a cloud-native pattern or something? No, that's probably why you're here, too, to, to find out. Um, also, who, uh, who do I have? For, anybody from Europe here? Anybody travel from Europe, North America, East Coast, West Coast, South America? Uh, Asia? Uh, okay, cool, cool. Al Australia? I was going to say, if you travel from that, it's impressive. But uh, all right, anyway, that's enough of these things. All right, so some cloud native patterns that we're going to take a look at are this uh, single responsibility pattern, which I'm sure you've heard about. You know, it's like do one thing, do it well. Um, just kind of microservices basically is this. Um, putting things into containers, uh, making uh, having health checks for your app, which is essentially making you know checking to see if your app is running or if when you know if it's ready to to run, and we'll see examples of these too. And resilience, something like uh, circuit breaking. Uh, so if your app goes down, what you can do to um, to kind of mitigate that um, and and have different fallbacks and that kind of thing. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other things that I didn't really write down on this list because there's a lot. Right, so uh, what is Kubernetes? I'm sure if you had gone to one of the talks today that was about Kubernetes, you've kind of already learned that. Basically, it's a platform for container or orchestration and a lot of other cool buzzwords. Um, so I'm going to assume that you guys have a little bit of info on what Kubernetes is. So just to kind of do this workshop and get it moving, we'll just kind of keep going. Um, just kind of, I just wanted to kind of do this little small little overview of some of these concepts, right? For that you would use when doing um, you know, Kubernetes deployments. So basically you have this, and this is going to work from like the smallest thing, and it's going to go kind of up to like a higher level. That's kind of the way this is going to go. So a container is the smallest, your smallest thing that you have. Um, and then you know, there's these container images that you combine with your code, and you, that's actually what creates the container. Um, and then those containers are stored in an imagery, in image registry somewhere, something like Docker Hub. Uh, if you're using OpenShift, OpenShift has, actually has its own uh, internal registry where you can store your things like that, maybe Quay IO um, or something else. Um, and then inside the image, inside the registry, um, that's where you can store all your different versions and everything. 
um, of your images. And then basically that container that, you, that we've been talking about um, will get wrapped in a pod. And that's actually what you deploy on Kubernetes. All right. Um, so what a deployment is, a deployment is actually this, the descriptor for that pod saying, OK, I want this many replicas, or I want this much CPU, or this much memory, or whatever. Um, something I forgot to mention, I am not a DevOps person at all. Like, hate it. If, yeah. if I can avoid it, I will. But um, so a lot of this stuff is going to be very kind of more of a high level, more of, of like a developer focus than like, like, oh, we, we need to boost the memory for this and make it this have this many CPUs and, and this. So um, I'm sorry if that's what you're looking for in this. There's more of, there's actually a Kubernetes uh, for JS uh, people talk tomorrow morning um, from some of my colleagues, which they go in a little bit more depth there. So if you want to check that out, that's at 9 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, quick plug. All right. So then there's this other concept of services. Um, this is essentially, um, if you want to have those pods and those deployments uh, accessible to the side, then you put a service on top of that. Um, it's kind of like a load balancer. So if you have multiple pods, or if you have a particular container that has multiple pods, so you can have maybe three or something like that, um, the service will connect that and then kind of load balance it, the traffic to throughout all those. Uh, and it's also a way for other applications that you might have in your cluster to talk to each other as well uh, with a service. And then this is something, this is more of an OpenShift specific thing, uh, a route. Um, but what it does is essentially it lives on top of a service um, and it makes it have a more readable URL uh, for easier access. Because um, we'll see in a minute uh, one of the apps um, how just a plain Kubernetes service works and what you have to do to, to get access to it. And then we'll see like a route and, and, and just see a little bit, uh, yeah, the niceties that, uh, that it adds. And then kind of going up the tier a little bit, um, and then we have a namespace, and that's essentially kind of like the, the grouping of kind of all your applications or all your services. Um, and you can break them up in between, you know, uh, a bunch of different ways between groups, departments, um, and they're all kind of isolated from each other. Um, right, so we talked about a little bit about Kubernetes and through these concepts. Uh, OpenShift is um, basically Red Hat's implementation of Kubernetes. So it's if you wanted to run just doing, doing plain Kubernetes on OpenShift, you could do that. Uh, OpenShift does add some niceties. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not a marketing person, so I'm not going to go in like, oh, this is, the, this is the differences and stuff. But it just adds some things on top of it, which are kind of nice. Uh, and one of those things, which we will see in an example, is this thing called source to image. Um, so basically, wh what source to image is, is you can, um, you can basically take your code and take a specialized Docker image and combine them together. So you can take your source code without having to write any Docker files or anything like that and create a Docker image and a resulting image that you, then you could then deploy. Um, so if you're doing that on, so this little picture here actually shows uh, kind of like a two-stage one. So the first sort of top part is kind of what we're talking about here, where you take the image, you take your source code, this build happens, and then you, your application image is essentially just a Docker image there. Um, right. So and then within OpenShift, there's this concept of the build. Um, and we'll, we'll see that in a minute. All right. So I kind of want to just go quick through that. OK, good, 10 minutes. So then we have the rest of the, the kind of the 50 minutes or whatever for this hour to kind of go through this. So if anybody, everybody wants to go to this link, um, this will open up an Etherpad. You might have to, I'm not sure if you're going to have to say allow the, um, it's a self-signed certificate on here. So you might have to say you know, Chrome might, or whatever you're using might freak out. So you might just have to allow the, the, um, the exception. Um, and I'm going to actually kind of switch in between, back and forth, because I do have things open. Um, if that's too small, let me know. Um, right, so you should see an Etherpad like this. So, let me connect. So basically, yeah, so, um, yeah, here we go. Oh, the link? Yeah. It's a uh, bit late, yeah. So basically, when you go into that, what you're going to want to do is, um, is that good for the link, whoever asked? Right. So yeah. So when you when you go when you do go into that, you're going to see all these users. So if you could just claim one, you don't have to put your name. You could put like your World of Warcraft character name. I don't really care. Um, just so somebody else doesn't use it. Um, and we'll use that. And you'll use that username with the password of OpenShift um, coming up as your logins for things. 
Um, so right. This, are people in that or no? Okay. Oh. I wonder if, um, yeah, I was just using this too, so let's see. All right. Well, this might make the, uh, the workshop a little uh, harder to do. All right, let's, um, it could be that the service is possibly down. So this is, so basically this is a hosted service that, um, that's supposed to be able to open up a terminal and we can do all the stuff within there. So um, if that is not working. That... Okay, okay. So it's possible that, um... all right. Um, I'm gonna go to Possible that they might have idled the service on me, which uh, that's going to be fun. Are you able to get out to actually out to the internet from? Okay. Okay. That's pretty slow, but. All right, I guess we'll just have to restart the thing, which might take a little time to come up, but maybe we can just uh, I can just go through the slides and then if it does come up, it will be up for a little while. Uh, and if we do run it, and I'm sure we'll run out of time, but if we run out of time, um, the slides should be somewhat self-explanatory. Um, and then like this should be up once we, um, after, after everything, so. Oh my God, you guys are seeing inside stuff right here. Everybody close their eyes for a while and uh, while I take care of this. No, I'm just kidding. Let me just, uh, we'll, we'll do this little restart thing and then kind of we'll go through the, the things and we'll, uh, we'll wait and see what happens. Before I do that, let's make sure that everything's still broken. Okay. All right, yes, I would like to restart my data. Okay. Okay, that'd probably take a few minutes to start. So we'll just kind of, I'll just go back to this and play around, All right? Okay, right. So what you were supposed to do there was go to this ether pad. And what you're gonna do is when this, all this stuff comes back up, we're gonna, everybody's gonna kind of take one of those users, user one through whatever it is. Um, and it'll be user one or user two, user three, user whatever your user number is. Omachef will be the password. Um, and then once that up, we'll actually go to this cool terminal um, that, that'll be running, and that's where we do all our stuff. Um, you'll see this screen here. It'll say, you know, it will start provisioning the stuff, and then we'll go into the terminal. Um, okay. um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna log in, we're gonna see who we are, we're gonna go, you know, check out the version of the thing, and while we're doing that, you know, I'll keep it like this, and then we can, we can see if it reloads. 
because it is recent. It's recent. Okay. okay. It might take like 10 minutes or something like that. So I'm sure we can talk about something else. Um, and then we're going to kind of create a new project and that kind of thing. So, um, all right, let's wait a few minutes for that thing. So we guys, we could talk about something else while we're while we're waiting. Um, you know, how was uh, what was your? I guess what have people gone to already? What's your favorite talk that's happened other than this one right now? <laughs> um, has and did anybody like anybody from New York? New York from upstate? Nobody. All right, awesome. Uh, Albany area. Oh, all right, cool, sweet. Um, anybody from New York City? No, no, okay. Uh, anybody actually from Montreal here, around, or Canada, in this general area, <laughs> this general area, I guess I should ask, right? Local people, all right, cool. Yeah, locals. Yeah. My favorite kind of fish? Um, the band. Okay, so, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Things, are, things are coming back up. It looks like. So, yes, okay. Awesome. Excellent. Um, let's see if the Etherpad thing. Yeah, so we'll take, actually take a look at that. And this will be a little fun little experiment. experiment. Um, open, what is it? Node something, right? Uh, okay. All right, I will make this bigger. Okay, cool. So, this is a view of OpenShift right here. Um, all these things are pods, we, which we heard about a few minutes ago. Um, all these other things, will, you know, all these are applications and that kind of thing. This is actually our terminal app that we're waiting, for, and actually it is running. These little circles, you know, when they're blue, it means that they're that they're now running. Um, the Etherpad thing, which is uh, here, it says it is now running also. Um, so if we go back to the Etherpad, um, let's see if that comes up. Is it, is it working? Oh, all right, cool. Is it slow? Yeah. But it's working. <laughs> it is working, okay. Yeah. Right, so okay, cool. All right, I think we're back in business here. Um, which, yeah, awesome. Um, okay, so when that comes up, like we said before, we're going to claim a username. Everybody claim a username. Um, if that comes up, which it is coming up. So. This is actually the uh, like what the console looks like here. Uh, I can do this. Let's see who am I? Probably not logged in. Yeah. All right. Cool. Let's see if I. Uh, that was when I created. A, or, okay. So see when it's light blue, that means it's not up. It just it looks like it just restarted, again. Okay, so all these pods should be, they say to wait like 15 minutes after everything comes up, but we're kind of just clicking, so we'll see what happens now. Yeah, you can actually click into this. This is actually clicking, and we'll, we'll go through this if this ever works, but I've now clicked into a pod, and you can actually check out the logs here um, if you wanted to. Um, you can update some, oh, there's more logs. Oh, it looks like it is uh, NPM installing some things for the terminal, or for the etherpad. Um, this overview of applications, yeah. Uh, this thing up here, this route, basically, this URL, that's actually an OpenShift route that's um, we, you could click on that, and that makes it the nice. Oh, awesome! Uh, there should be a. Um, oh, awesome! Awesome! Okay, it keeps restarting, which is not great. Um, actually, can I? Um, let's go back to the slides real quick, and maybe we can do something else with the Etherpad. Because the Etherpad is really just to get our usernames, so maybe we can guess at it. Um, can people go try going to this terminal link? Let me just make it bigger. 
So when you go to this, um, I forget, you might have to say allow permissions. There might be a screen first for that um, before it starts creating. Um, but if it asks you to log in, I would, you can use user and then try a, uh, I don't want everybody to use the same user, so that's gonna kind of be an issue if we don't um, do that. But. There's 75 total. So if I have to, I can be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Does the input step confirm role? The console is good? Okay. Let's see if, uh, I mean, we're a bunch of engineers here. I feel like we could figure something out. All right, okay, so the etherpad looks like it's working. Maybe, yeah, okay, cool. All right, so yeah, if you go back to this etherpad thing, put your name or a mark of some kind that somebody knows, like if you don't wanna put your name, you can just put something on there so you know which user you are. All right, good, people are, people are filling things in. Yeah, we're all the way down 75, cool. All right, so people are, are there, no? Okay, you the per, okay. So you you can be user thirty. Okay. <laughs> you're having an issue. Okay, so I'll just put take in there. Okay. All right. It looks like people are in there and they're they're doing stuff, which is great. Oh, so the password is going to be OpenShift. Yep. Oh, sorry. I, I got to go back to the slide so you can see the actual stuff. Right. Yeah. So the password will be op will be OpenShift. Um. So if you go back to here. Right. Okay. So. Once you start getting into the terminal, does anybody need me to put the link for the terminal? Essentially, it's the bit.ly link slash Montreal 2019 uh, terminal, I think it is. I can go back one. This is just a thing for the terminal, just as a, as a quick whatever. Um, yeah, so once you go in there, you'll see, um, you have to click allow for some permissions. Um, you'll see this thing provisioning. Um, and once you get through that, you'll actually be in the terminal. Um, and you are gonna need to log in inside the terminal. Um, so which is OC login dash U, which is, and then you specify your user. Don't actually put user N, the N stands for your number, just in case anybody didn't know that. Um, and then dash P and then OpenShift is your password. I'm gonna kinda, just, I'm gonna kinda click around here so we can see things. Uh, let's see. See in the terminal, people's terminals are getting created. So yeah, so these, so every time somebody logs into the terminal, is actually creating these pods right here. That's actually not part of the, the whole presentation, but since everything went to shit anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna improvise. Yeah. So. All right. Cool. Um, yeah. Co so okay. So just I'm sure. I don't know if everybody's in there, but we're just gonna kind of move along just to kind of get things. Get things rolling here. All right, yeah, so you gotta log in. Uh, if you do an OC who am I, after you've logged in, you can see that you are the particular user that you logged in as. Uh, if you use kubectl version, then you can see that those thing, that, that command line tool is actually installed. Interesting. Yeah, 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 okay, gotcha. Awesome. I will give you a dollar, <laughs> US, after this. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the conversion rate is. Is it like if one US dollar is like a dollar fifty or something Canadian, or or is it like the other way? Okay, it's the first one. Okay. So okay. So all right. So kind of moving along. So you don't actually have to do this This next, the, the new project thing. Um, it's just that's how you can create a new project. Right now, if you were to do OC project, it would say that you're using the user number of your guy's project. Um, if you want to use nano as your editor instead of VI, do this export command here. Um, but I would, I would recommend doing this export um, host command. Um, you don't have to put that backslash if you're just writing it all out. This is if you're gonna copy and paste. Um, and the slides are on, um, actually that first slide, if you were to actually go to it, but, because um, we're gonna use this host variable 
um, in a couple of examples. So if we have it set up already, you'll be good. Let's give you guys a few minutes to, to type. If I come up, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. And it's not HTTPS, it is just regular HTTP, just in case anybody thought I made a typo. Yeah, yeah. So if you're just typing it out, you, you could get you don't have to put the slash in. It was just for a copy paste thing. Um, if anybody needs me to go back, I, I can. Um, and so now we're going to open up the web, the web console with the thing that I've been kind of clicking through. Um, so now you guys can actually get your own one. Um, so if you guys want to go to that link, username, password is the same as what you logged in with the, uh, with the terminal. Um, there will be some things where it would be nice to have the terminal and the web console up at the same time so we can see some things. And, which we kind of saw when we were debugging all this other thing. So, um, all right. All right. Yeah. So it should we should see this this thing that we saw. Um, if you go into, um, it, it might open up where it's like this catalog of, of different icons and stuff. So you just on the right hand side. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just show you. So when you when you first open it up, you might actually see this kind of view. Um, I would just you would just go into um, it'll you'll have like one thing on the. Of course, you can't actually see me pointing at my screen. Um, on that, I guess it'd be the right hand side. Um, you'll probably just see like user and then the number of user you are. So you just actually click that, and that goes into your namespace or your project. Or if you created one on the command line, um, you could go into that one too. So this is the one I have. Um, Node fun times. this. All right, so um, for now, do this for, all right. What's that? Um, that, at the moment, no. So that's just for, it will, it will work in a minute. This is, yeah, so that's just kind of a little bit of preparation. Um, okay. Actually, if you put the if you put to, if you did it as HTTPS, I think it would open up the um, that console instead. But we're not, yeah. So. All right, so right, we're just gonna try to do this a very simple Node.js app um, to get deployed. Um, you know, so you know you might have something like this, very basic Express app. I'm sure everybody's kind of familiar with this, what this looks like. So we'll go quick. And then in order to make this into a container, we need a Docker file. We might select, you know, have some sort of some version of node. Um, you know, at the bottom you're gonna say run npm start or something like that as your command. I'm just kinda just gonna kinda go quick here. Um, all right, so how do we get this into Kubernetes? Right, we deploy an image. So here's some things now. Okay, so going back to your terminal, if you guys type this in, uh, this will actually deploy um, a, a container that we already have. It's on Docker Hub. Um, with just a, that basic sort of hello node um, uh, application. And again, the, the reason why for that backslash or that slash is because if you're copying and pasting this um, for new lines and stuff, so you could leave that out if you needed to. So basically this is saying, right, create a deployment um, called hello, and we're gonna use this image, image just this upper image, and we're gonna use version 1.0.0 uh, when we deploy it. Um, and I can actually do that with you. Uh, yeah, I might as well just follow along as well. I can't copy and paste with the thing. All right. I will, uh, I'll follow along with you guys so I kind of have an idea of the, the timing. Actually, 
So let's see who's uh, not taking 22. All right, that's it. That was good. All right, cool. So, projects. I should be able to see the user twenty two here. Or I could just, yeah. Right. So if you had, so if you actually look at the uh, at the web console and your user, you should see that there is this, this there is this deployment of what we just did. I'm um, kind of going back to the slides here real quick. I'm going to be jumping back and forth. I'll make that bigger. Uh, yeah. So we have this deployment. You can do this kubectl uh, get deployment hello, which is the name of the deployment, and dash o is for the output. And if you did YAML, you will see um, what your deployment is, what it looks like in YAML format. Um, you could also describe it, and that gives a little bit more uh, readable um, things. For the dash O, you could also do a dash O JSON, and that will output in, I, you guessed it, JSON format instead of YAML. Um, if you do uh, a kubectl CTL get pods, you'll actually see the pods that you have running, which should be just the one, which is the, um, the one that we just did. Um, and then you can do a kubectl logs, and then don't actually, it's whatever the pod name is, they change. So that, if you were to type that one that's on the screen, it would actually not work because that's not the pod name. Um, but you can also do that if you're in the web console by clicking in that little blue circle that we looked at earlier. Um, and you can click on logs and, and, check, and check that out there too. All right, so now that we have something deployed, how do we actually expose that and be able to get access to it? Um, we have to create a service for that. So um, just doing plain Kubernetes stuff, you know, do a kubectl expose. You want, uh, you want to expose the deployment uh, with the name of hello. Uh, we're going to tell it to um, bind to port 8080. And here we're going to use a type of node port. Um, there's a couple different types. We're not, not going to go into what those are. But essentially, node port um, is kind of the most basic ways of exposing things. Um, it actually, if you don't specify um, a particular port for your node port, it will, um, which is different than the port that's there. Um, it assigns you a random one. So in this case, we'll actually be assigned a random port, and um, we'll, I'll show you how to how to get that in a in a minute or two, or seconds, whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so you can see the service that you created. If you do kubectl get service uh, with hello as the name of the service, and dash o again, YAML. Um, um, yeah. And now, actually, to get the, the port, that the no port that the service created for us, the dynamic thing, um, you could do this command. Uh, basically, we're getting, we're getting the service, and um, Inside, if you were actually to get that service as a JSON output, then you can actually see, um, you know, where it's located. So in this particular, day, we're using a JSON path. We're saying, you know, within within that big JSON object, there's a spec um, parameter. Inside that, there's an address port, um, which is an array. We're going to get the you know the first the first element or the zero element, whatever, of that array, and then get the node port element from that array in that uh, returned object. And that will give us the port. Um, if we're using the web console, we can actually, it's slightly easier because it's just displayed there. We can copy and paste it. Um, but if you do these commands and you curl the host, which we created earlier, with that port, then you're actually able to get the, um, the application um, that we've, the very, very simple <laughs> node app that we, uh, that we deployed. Anybody that needs me to go back at all, slide-wise, that, no, okay, I'm going to take silences, whatever. Yeah. I'm sure there's people still typing that export statement. All 
I will have, I'll keep this up, but if you wanted to, um, yeah, I'm sure you, you can't see that. Um, but if you wanted to actually, um, no, I didn't actually create the service on my end. Sorry. If you actually, oh, sorry, maybe you guys aren't following. So, um, what I basically what I did was there's this little service section here. I cl clicked on that hello for the service, and then right here is actually what the node port is. Um, if people were um, wanting to go that route instead. This is a workshop yet, I guess I can come around and walk around. Okay, um, so let's see, because I'll go back to your terminal. Okay, so it's not getting on there. Okay, so it hasn't come up with any things at all. Here, uh, scroll, uh, here, do um, an OC or a QPCTL get service? Here, uh, go back to the, your um, your thing there and actually do re just a, like, a refresh of the page and to make sure it's still running. All right, well, that's good. <laughs> that's a good sign. Okay, um, here, why don't you go back to uh, the terminal thing there. Um, and this was, okay, the service was exposed. Here, actually, go back to, sorry, the web console. Go to um, applications and then services. Okay, it doesn't say anything. And you are, who are you in? in the butterfly thing there. I mean, you should only be, yeah, you, okay, 38, okay. So okay, all right, cool. All right, all right, okay. Let's see how much time we have here. All right, we got about like, I think, what's time this in? 4.10, 4.20? Four ten maybe. Four ten, yeah. Okay. All right. So, all right. So one of the th uh, let's go back to the, let's just make this bigger. It'd be easier to do. All right. We'll do this. All right. So if you wanted to roll out a new version of the application, um, you can just set a, the image to um, basically a new version of the Docker image that's that's here, um, and then that will. Um, I'm just going to run through this to be, so we can get to the actual real application that actually has the cloud native pattern. So if you don't want to type this in, it's fine. There's slides, and you could kind of work on this later, too. So basically what you would do is you would just deploy a new image with a new version, um, and that will actually just update the image. Right. And, then, and then this is just the way you would clean up. You delete the stuff, and basically it's saying that services and deployments are actually independent of, of each other. So if you delete a service, it doesn't actually del delete the deployment. Um, you know, because they're not connected that way. I mean, they sort of connected, but if you, they can live, you know, independently from each other. All right. Right. So we deployed a thing. We saw pods. We saw deployments. We saw a service. We saw how to run a container image in Kubernetes um, and how to, ex how to expose that. All right. So now we're actually going to build a real application here. So, okay. So if you're in your terminal, let's, we can clone this, uh, this repo here. Um, we're gonna do like a combination of, like, yeah, I'll, I'll save it. I won't spoil it.
So hopefully most people have that clones. If not, I can um, just wait another second, a few seconds, you know. If anybody needs me to go back, just let me know. Um, basically, I'll make this bigger just for this. So basically, what this app is 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 um, we're going to be uh, basically hitting a couple different uh, services, and we're going to basically return this Elizabethan insult, um, like an insult from the time of um, probably like the 1600s or something like that, England. Um, we're going to be insulted that way. Um, the, the way the app is broken up, there's this front end service that's running uh, that then goes into this insult service that's that's just a node, regular node service. Um, that service actually calls two different ones, an adjective service and a noun service to get back an adjective and a noun. Um, and then all that stuff is put together and, and sent back to the browser. Within each of those, in front of, in front of each of those services, uh, we have a circuit breaker. That one here we're using a possum, JS, which is, um, one circuit breaker implementation, I think breaks is another one. Um, there might be a couple other. There might be a couple others. Um, right. Okay. Right. So if you have that repo cloned, um, what we're going to do is so you go into that directory. Um, you can cat the deploy sh to see kind of what we're doing here. Um, there's a couple. We're we're going to do kind of a couple different things here. So. The majority of the services, we're just going to do the regular deploy like we saw from the, the other app. Um, it's just going to you know, push up a Docker image that's already been created, and it's going to expose that. And then it's actually going to create routes, so we don't have to worry about doing that no port stuff anymore, because that's just a pain. Um, but if you look in that file, we, there's the, the kind of the noun service has been commented out. Um, that I actually wanted to have us deploy a different way using a tool, tool called node shift. Um, which will do sort of the S2I flow of deploying things, just to kind of get a, a different kind of perspective on um, different ways of deploying. Um, and so if you run that deploy script now, you should be able to have, you should, it should be pretty quick um, deploying the front end service, I think the adjective service, um, and the insult service. And if you do a kubectl get pod, you should be able to see um, that, they're, that they're running. Um, uh, we'll do it all together at the same time. That's not the terminal I wanted. Problem with context switching. Sorry, let me go back and get this. In case anybody needs it, here's the, uh, the git URL again. Back to that. All right. Okay, and we just say deploy that. If I can type correctly, and if you were to look in your in your console, um, yeah. don't worry about the hello thing. I mean, if you still have that hello app in there, it's, we just didn't clean it up, but that's fine. Uh, so we should see that there's an adjective uh, application running front end, uh, an insult one that's also running. Um, if you wanted, if you are in this view right now. Um, you can, and this is just a picture of, of that. Um, before before we deploy the noun one, but you can um, it, you can actually if you're inside the side console and you click on the link to the front end, um, that should open up, and you can actually you know hit insult me, um, and it gives you a, a nice um, a nice insult here. Um, if you do it a couple of times, you'll notice that it's the same thing that's that's happening. Um, there's something we need to fix. Um, with how it's getting to the insult service. Um, here, we'll just we'll, we'll do that. So if you're actually, so if you go to the, uh, like your web console or the, the dev console in Chrome or, or whatever browser you're using, um, you'll see that it's, the circuit breaker is breaking, so it's failing. Um, and it is because, I don't know if you can see it, I don't know if it shows it in here, um, but the, um, the, the URL that's trying to hit is a local host. 8080. It's not actually trying to hit. It has the, the one that we're actually running on um, on our Kubernetes cluster. So we need to fix that. So the way we're going to do that, uh, I'll go back to here. Um, 
while while we're fixing that, if you what you want to if you want to um, back in the terminal, go into the noun directory, do an npm run deploy. This will actually kick off the node shift um, thing, which will take a little bit because it's going to basically what this is going to do. It's going to package up the code that's in the noun directory. Um, it's going to send that up to OpenShift and it's going to combine it with an S2I image. It's going to build that, which means it's going to do an npm install all on the, the cluster. Uh, once that gets done, then it will create the deployment, it'll create a service, and it'll create a route, and it'll deploy that pod, and everything will be running. Um, but it'll just take a few, you know, maybe a minute or two while it does the npm install you know, on the hosted service. Um, so if we have that running, then we, while we create this sort of this external configuration that we're going to see to, to fix the issue with it still pointing to localhost. All right, and then we'll, we'll, and we'll come back to the end. Yeah, so these were the slides basically saying, hey, look, this thing is broken because it's pointing at localhost, so we're skipping around a little bit. All right, so we're gonna check out this external configuration thing, um, and we're gonna do it, I, I, had, I do have slides where you do a do from the command line, which is farther down. Um, it's editing YAML files, and I just very dislike editing YAML files because I don't know where the uh, tabs and spaces are supposed to be on those things. So we're going to do it from the console. So if you go back to the, uh, go to your web console, and just follow me if you want. Um, under resources, config maps. And then we say create a config map. We're going to call, we're going to name it insult service, just with a dash, insult dash service. The key was going to, now you're going to have, this is going to be all uppercase, it's going to just be insult underscore service, and the value here that we're going to do is, um, it's going to be the, re oh, should I show it to you? Yeah. The value here we're going to have here is actually going to be the route to the insult service that's running. Um, so I probably should have told you to um, copy that first. So I, I, keep, I always made that mistake while practicing this, too. So. Um, so we'll just have to do that part again. So if you go back to the overview and you go to the, the insult thing here and copy this, this link first, and then go back to the resources. Oh, sorry. Um, and we actually can see if you put that in and do slash API slash insult. Sorry, I'm skipping around. Um, you can actually see that that's getting um, uh, it is getting um, insults, adjectives, and, and actually the same noun because I have yet to um, deploy the noun, um, the noun thing, the noun service. Sorry. So create config map. Insult service dash service capitals underscore service. So then your value is actually going to be that route that you copied slash API slash insult. If we create that, that will create our config map. And now we're going to go back, kind of back to the overview. Um, and then our front end here, we can click this front end thing to go into our front end deployment. Hopefully I'm not losing anybody. Um, in environment, we're going to click on add value from config map or secret. Um, this name, we're going to actually be insult service, where it's going to be capitals. Insult, insult underscore service, all caps. Uh, the resource that we're going to use is the insult service config map that we just created. And the key that we're going to use is the insult service key that we created for that. So for that. And then if you click save, um, that will actually trigger, if you go back to the overview, that actually will trigger a new deployment. Um, and I didn't click back fast enough, and it, so this actually redeployed. And we can see that because there's a number two here. That's actually the second deployment that happened. Um, and if we refresh the the insult, the uh, the application page, yeah, um, and hit insult me, it should have different. Except for the noun part of it, all the other things, the adjectives should be should be different. Now. Unless you have already, if you if you did uh, deploy the noun service, then the noun should actually be changing as well. Um, 
Um, right, um, so for service URL, don't put anything in there. I don't. Oh. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Sorry. Right, uh, so here, click this add value from convenient map procedure. Yep. And so from here, we're going to put in uh, insult underscore service, all capitals. Uh, in uh, IN, unless that's what you named it. But. And then there should just be the, the insult service thing. And then the key should just be, yeah, that. that. And then just hit save. Cool. Did anybody actually get that deployed and working? One person. All right, that's a success, one person. <laughs> now you get two US dollars. <laughs> All right. All right, let's see where we were on the slides. All right, so that was config map. So that's one pattern, is kind of um, having your some configurations not necessarily within your app, but in an external resource. Uh, that you can change, and so every time you change that, then your deployment can, can happen again, but you're not actually changing code. So that's a good thing to have, kind of keep things separate. And you should think pod, of pods too as as things that you know that will will die. Uh, you know, sort of consistent. You know, not consistent, but like it's there, and they should be somewhat stateless because you know they can go up and down like a bunch. Um, so you want to keep as little as little state as you po as you can probably out of in the, you know in the pod and keep it in these other different you know, external configurations. Oh, this just walks through going that. So if you were, did want to do it from the command line um, and you were playing along with the slides and um, um, this is just another way of doing it, and you would actually have to edit the deployment and edit some YAML and um, that's why I'd rather do it from the the web console because editing YAML isn't my my favorite thing. All right. So health checks, uh, which are liveliness and readiness um, URLs. Uh, this is, here's another pattern. Um, so essentially, what a liveness probe is is basically checking to see if your app is alive. Um, and readiness is, you know, is, a, is something that you can check to make see if your app is ready yet. And with a combination of these, you could actually make it so you have zero downtime when de redeploying your app applications. Um, so something with, um, so in all these in this particular application that we're doing all the services, um, there's actually a, um, a module called Cube Probe, which if you add that, it'll actually add um, these slash API slash health liveness and the readiness probes to your Express applications. So you don't have to worry about it because those are the defaults for Kubernetes and slash OpenShift. Um, but if you did want it, if you did have other, UR, say a URL that you wanted to hit or change it up, you could modify that. And then, you know, when you're requiring, you, you, you add the option, you, know, you can do the options and stuff. So all the app, all the services within this Elizabethan install app do, do you, has this already kind of installed there. Um, so if you were to, if you happen to have that, that front end um, path, Already in your terminal, and you went to these, these out, you know, these uh, APIs, or you could just do it from the web browser, as well. You go to those APIs; it should just return OK. Um, that's just the that's the default thing it does. It just returns a 200 OK. Um, but right now, there, and, we'll, and, we'll, and we'll, we'll actually do this from from the uh, from the web console because it is easier than e editing the. Uh, thing. So if, so if we wanted to add the actual, so right now those, those, uh, you, those APIs and the user, the URLs, the REST APIs are there in the app, but they're not configured inside the cluster for that particular deployment. Um, so again, if we go in here into this deployment for front end, uh, we could say configuration. Um, here it actually says, hey, you don't have any health checks, do you want to add them? Yeah, sure, we do. Um, so you can add a readiness one. So the path for that would, would be slash API slash um, health slash uh, readiness. If that's the readiness one, yeah. 
And then port is 8080, because that's the port that the app, actual application is running on. And then you can just leave, you know, if you wanted to leave the, uh, the defaults here. Uh, basically, the initial delay is saying, how long should I wait before doing this ping? And then the timeout is, um, you know, how long to wait after the counter starts before checking health. Or uh, actually, that's not right, because I read the wrong one. Um, yeah, we could read that. Um, right, and the liveliness has, has very similar um, um, uh, options as well. So right now we're just going to add a, a readiness one, and then that's it. And then basically every kind of configuration change that we've been doing here has been redeploying this front end app. So right, this, now we're up to the third time. Um, so that's why it is a good idea to keep things, uh, any kind of configurations kind of, kind of separate there too. So we've actually went in here um, into the configuration. Now we can see that it's, uh, we have this readiness probe here. Um, and it doesn't, have to be, it doesn't have to be a REST endpoint either. It could be like, you could tell these, these probes to run a command from like the command line or something like that to see if, you're, if you're, you know, your app is ready or if your app is still alive. So yeah. All right, so we don't have too much time here, so we'll go quick. Uh, one kind of more, more concept here, which is probably the most important one, um, and no, not that, because that's not, resilience, which is the circuit breaking stuff. So we saw this diagram earlier. There's circuit breakers basically before you know every single app here, and here we're using this thing called a possum, which you know has some options. This particular error threshold percentage saying this one says basically. If there's 70% of things that happen are errors, then we're going to trip the circuit and we're going we're to fail and we're going to fall back to the error stuff and we're going to open up. Um, timeout here is how long, like if we're making a rest, like a rest call, like how long should that happen before we say it's failing? This is 500 milliseconds, so we probably want to up that if possible. Um, and then once things do open, it's like this reset timeout is saying, how long should we wait to to close the circuit so we can try again. Um, that's what the, and then the name is just naming something. It's not really a big, a big thing there. Um, so in this example, this is just a node example here. Uh, we have this function called get noun, which gets a, a URL from some service. And if it, fit, if it passes, then it's going to re return some, some data. Um, we create our new circuit. Um, and then we say, OK, you know, on failure, we're going to just output to the console. But as a fallback, if it does error, we're just going to return, we're going to call this function that returns this object that says noun and dung scraper is the, is the value of, of, uh, of the return value. Um, this is actually, I think, the, the, the getting the noun service um, in, in the code. Right. And then this is just saying, hey, on this thing, uh, we do circa.fire, which calls that function that we previously. So that's, the fire function will actually call the get noun function there. Um, and then you know, do all that stuff. Um, and then we can also do it inside the browser, too, which it also works and has very similar options. Um, and then in this case, and we, and we saw this when our insult service wasn't working, we were actually getting that as fallback as our return values. Um, so it is. You know, you can use it in, on just regular node apps, or you can use it on uh, like a web front end kind of thing. And then again, this is saying when the form was, form was being sent, it was it was firing. So one way we can test that, um, and we sort of already saw it already uh, um, thing, but this is saying, um, and we can do this from we can actually do this from the uh, the web console again here. Um, what that example is saying, they wanted to take down, and I don't I don't have it here, so just follow along, but. If you, if you took down, they wanted to basically say, let's take down one of, the, one of those services. So in this case, I'm doing the adjective one. If you want to do noun, that's fine too. So we can actually scale it down to zero. Um, from the, and those command line commands that, were, that I can show you again, it basically doing the same thing. It was saying just the amount of replicas that it should have, just make them zero. Um, so this is now zero. And um, so if we, do, if we do it now, the um, yeah, I think the yeah, um, the circuit breaker should kick in and it should just do the fallback values instead. 
And then if you want to bring the, that particular um, service back up, then you can just click that little button and say, give me one pod, and then it'll bring it back up. I know we're just moving fast because we don't really have any time left, but right. And that's saying, um, so yeah, basically this is saying edit the, edit the deployment uh, file for the noun, bring the amount of replicas to zero, basically saying just don't have any more pods. Um, you test the service and you can see that it's failing, then you just bring them back up um, and the pods start working again. Right, okay. So this is, so that's kind of it. So the review we saw um, very, very quickly, and I'm sorry for that, that we kind of had that first 10 minutes or whatever of trying to get things back into, into order. Um, but we saw some things, like we saw, um, you know, deploying, deploying with just using the regular vanilla Kubernetes stuff. We saw using Node Shift. Um, so about creating routes. Um, so these different sort of patterns, or patterns, as my six-year-old likes to say, um, you know, of, of keeping things separate in ex external configurations and, and circuit breaking and putting and using health checks. So since we don't have any time, I do. I want. If we did, I was going to do this thing where how would you actually do like a modern web application? Because the one the application for front end here, it's actually some. I, I, you know, it's just HTML, but it's also being served by, um, it's just a regular web app. It, it's just being served, and it's also being served by like an express server. Um, but how would you do, like just, like if you were gonna do like a React app or, or like a Angular or Ember or something like that, um, there's actually, we actually have an S2I image that's specific for those kinds of things. Um, and you don't have to do this now because I, I know we're sort of, sort of out of time. But basically, this allows you to, this, this S2I image, um, will take your, like in this example, it's just this React web app is a basic create React, web, create React app application. That's all it is. Um, and it basically will take that code, it will re run the NPM build or yarn build, whatever you're using. Um, it will take that, it will take what you've built in the, that output directory, and then it will just, it will actually do, it will use NPM serve, or I think technically it's NPX serve, It'll use the serve module to then serve that code. That's that's one way you can do it. You can actually also do some slight modification or um, add some uh, some environment variables where you can actually run the full real React server or the dev server of that modern web app on OpenShift, and then connect your code, um, you know, like an rsync kind of thing in between. So changes you make locally, you, they will reflect and re that whole kind of loop of um, change, make any change locally and it propagating up to the running container. Um, and then you can see the changes and stuff. Um, and then the other thing that this is great for is um, kind of that two state, if, I'll just go back to it really quick, just to confuse everybody here, was this. So this two stage thing here. Because Really, when you create a modern web app, like a web application, you're not necessarily, it's, all it is is HTML and JavaScript. It's not necessarily a node app, right? Like you use node to build um, your things. But you really don't use node to serve it necessarily, and that's something like Nginx or Apache or, or some sort of HTTP server is better suited for that. So this allows you to do this, and this is what's called a chain build right here. Um, so you basically take your, your web code, which is the source code in this particular top example, with that, with that builder image, that gets, and you create a new image. And then you can take that image with like an Nginx image, for instance, and say, because all really the image is, is a file system. And you can point and say, here's where that code was just built. Using that code and that directory, pipe or push that, you know, put that code into this Nginx image. And that gets built, and that's the thing that actually runs. So on your resulting image, image, the thing that's running or whatever, you have zero node code at all because all it is is HTML and that kind of stuff. Um, I've written a few blog posts on that called Modern Web Publications on OpenShift. You can Google that or not uh, if you want to learn more or just come and talk to me if you want to or try, you don't have to talk to me at all if you don't want to. Um, so. I'm actually going to skip the question section and just say thank you because this was a, a very interesting, interesting uh, thing. 
Um, just last, if, so I'm usually the person walking around aimlessly because I have nobody to talk to. So if you find yourself in that position where you're like walking around because you don't really know anybody and you see me, you can just randomly come up and talk to me. So you don't have to be in that position anymore. Um, just it has nothing to do with this talk. It's just, it's just how, you know, it's, it's just how things happen at conferences. Um, so if you find yourself just kind of aimlessly walking around and being like, I don't know what to do because I don't know anybody here, and you see and you see me, just you can come up and we can have random conversations on, on how interesting this talk was or, or fish or Star Wars or War of Warcraft or anything really. Yeah, so, but all right. Thank you so much for enduring that. Um, all right.